Today on Listen Up, putting North America's religious freedom onto the global stage. What's to be done when people die because of their beliefs? That's coming up. Welcome to Listen Up, I'm Lorna Duick. Religious freedom has received unusual scrutiny thanks to some high profile activities. The proposed construction of an Islamic community center and mosque near Ground Zero was controversial. But when a Florida pastor threatened to burn the Muslim holy book in response, retaliatory violence was feared around the world. Today we go to the mosque to find out if faith groups who distrust each other can challenge that view. We look at the implications of what that could mean for 100 million around the globe who suffer violence because they are Christian. But first, putting a stop to hate mongering when it comes out of a church. Dr. Jeff Tunnicliffe, president of the World Evangelical Alliance, joins us from New York City. Jeff Tunnicliffe is a global church leader speaking for 420 million evangelical Christians. You asked a rogue pastor not to burn Qurans. Had he gone ahead with his plan, what do you think would have happened? Well, Lorna, we were hearing from church leaders around the world even before uh, you know, the, the burning was actually going to take place. And there was already demonstrations and violence already coming against Christians um, uh, in many parts of the world, in, in Indonesia, in India. And uh, our concern was that if he actually went ahead with it, the radicals would then take this uh, act and uh, exploit it in a, a very negative way. And we felt that there would be significant violence and probably deaths because of it. And our concern would be that there would be a, a YouTube uh, portion of this video and we would have to live with that uh, video for years to come. The vast majority of Christians around the world uh, believe that he showed great disrespect and his actions, his proposed actions, were simply not a reflection of Christian values. And what, what do you think is the emotion driving this mess? Well, I think there's all sorts of emotions that are uh, driving this mess. I, I, you know, part of it is that, the, you know, there's this feeling that, you know, there's this growing tensions between Muslims and Christians and, and that there, no one's talking to each other. When the reality is there is many conversations taking place to try and build bridges of understanding, bridges of friendship, and realizing that we come from definitely different worldviews, differently theological perspectives but we can live in peace. And, uh, but I think there's a lot, there's anger, there's misunderstanding. Um, and I don't know what really drove Terry Jones to take this action, uh, it, perhaps driven out of fear uh, and uh, perhaps many other things. But it's, it's, a, uh, it's a sad indictment really on, on, on the sort of the fringe element that want to um, exploit what some of the radicals are doing in the world. All right, now let's put this on a global scale because every week I get email updates listing attacks on Christians around the world. Eight Christian aid workers murdered in August in Afghanistan. Uh, that got some profile. We had three aid workers murdered in Pakistan, hardly noticed. 300 families in the floods in Pakistan, not allowed to move because they're Christian, nobody noticed. Somalia, Sudan, India, Sri Lanka, Vietnam, there's over 30 countries persecuting Christians. Why is there no similar outrage to those abuses? Lorna, I think you're asking a really, really important question. Because one of the things that we have stated is that it was absolutely right for world leaders, uh, faith leaders, the media to come out in opposition to what Terry Jones was proposing to do. Because for us as Christians, it didn't reflect Christian values. But in terms, of it, it didn't reflect a spirit of tolerance. And so to come together, as it were, the world against Terry Jones was really important. Well, one of the questions that we have uh, raised in the media and to government officials is this. When other acts occur, which have actually produced violence, and as you said, on a, on a regular basis, uh, can we come together in the same way to join arms and say, this is simply not acceptable. We want to see an end to this. We want to stop this kind of uh, violence against Christians or people of any other faith. Uh, we simply say that's, that's not acceptable. 
And so we're actually appealing for consistency in how we respond to these kinds of acts. And so my appeal to, again, to government leaders, to faith leaders, to the media is, be consistent in how you, re you report on these kind of uh, activities. Dr. Jeff Tenacliff in New York City, thank you very much. You're welcome, Lorna, great to be with you. When we return, a global Muslim leader tackles the tough questions about protecting human rights for those of other faiths. That persecution is wrong. If there is no betrayal involved, okay? Um, if someone chooses to be uh, a Christian or a Jew, whatever, is a matter of choice.